Luke 13, 10. Now Yeshua was teaching in one of the synagogues on Shabbat, and behold, there was a woman with a disabling spirit for 18 years, bent over and completely unable to stand up straight. When Yeshua saw her, he called out to her and said, Woman, you are set free from your disability. Then he laid his hands on her, and instantly she stood up straight and began praising God. But the synagogue leader, indignant that Yeshua had healed on Shabbat, started telling the crowd, There are six days in which work should be done, so come to be healed on those days and not on Yom Shabbat. But the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrites, on Shabbat, doesn't each of you untie his donkey or ox from the stall and lead it away to give it a drink? So this one, a daughter of Abraham, incapacitated by Satan for 18 years, shouldn't she be set free from this imprisonment on Yom Shabbat? When Yeshua said these things, all his opponents were put to shame, but the whole crowd was rejoicing in all the glorious things done by him. Go. So Yeshua was saying, What is the kingdom of God like? To what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed which a man took and dropped into his own garden. It grew and became a tree, and birds of the air nested in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like hummets, which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. And he continued on his journey through the towns and villages, teaching and making his way to Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Master, are only a few being saved? Then Yeshua said to him, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will try and enter and will not be able. Once the master of the household gets up and shuts the door, and, you, and you're standing outside and begin knocking on the door, saying, Master, open up for us. Then he will say to you, I don't know where you come from. Then you will start to say, We ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I don't know where you come from. Get away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out, and they will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and they will recline at the table of the kingdom of God. And indeed, some are last who shall be first, and some are first who shall be last. In that hour, some Pharisees came up and said to Yeshua, Get out of here, get out and leave from here, because Harry wants to kill you. But Yeshua said to them, Go and tell that fox, indeed, I'm driving out demons and performing healings today and tomorrow. And then on the third day, I will reach my goal. But I must keep going today and tomorrow because it just can't be that a prophet will perish outside Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those sent to her. How often I long to gather your children together as a hen gathers their chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you, who, to you desolate. For I tell you, you will never see me until you say, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai. Mm, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Luke 14. Now when Yeshua went into the home of one of the leaders of the Pharisees to eat a meal on Shabbat, they were watching him closely, and there before him was a man, swollen with fluid. So Yeshua said to the Torah lawyers and the Pharisees, Is it permitted to heal on Shabbat or not? But they kept silent, so Yeshua took hold of him and healed him and sent him away. Then he said to them, Which of you with a son or an ox falling into a well on Yom Shabbat will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. And Yeshua began telling a parable to those who had been invited. When he noticed how they were choosing the seats of honor, he said to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding, don't take the seat of honor for someone more highly esteemed than you may have been invited by him. Then the one who invited both of you will come to you and say, Give up this seat, and with shame you would proceed to take the lowest seat. But when you are invited, go in and recline in the lowest seat, so that when one who is invited comes, one who is the so when the one who invited you, you comes, he may say to you, "Friend, move up higher." Then you shall be honored in the presence of all those who are dining with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Yeshua was also saying to the one who invited him, When you host a luncheon or dinner, don't invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors. Otherwise, they might invite you in return as your paycheck, payback. But when you host a banquet, invite the poor, crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. Since they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Now hearing this, one of those dining with Yeshua said to him, Blessed is he who eats bread in the kingdom of God. But Yeshua said to him, A certain man was hosting a large banquet, and he invited many. At the time for a banquet, he sent his slave to tell those who had been invited, Come, everything is already prepared. But every one of them began to beg off. The first said to him, I bought a farm, and I'm obligated to go out and see it. I'm asking you to have me excused. 
Then another one said, I've purchased five teams of oxen and I'm going to check them out. I'm asking you to have me excused. Still another said, I've married a wife so I cannot come. The slave came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house got angry and said to his slave, quickly, go out into the squares and the alleys of the city and bring the here the poor, the maimed, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Master, I have done as you instructed, and there is still room. So the master said to the slave, Go out into the thoroughfares and fenced areas and press them to come into my home, so it may be filled, for I tell you, none of those men who were invited will taste my banquet. Now great crowds are traveling with Yeshua, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you wanting to build a tower doesn't first sit down and figure out the cost to see if he has enough to finish it? Otherwise, when he had laid a foundation and isn't able to finish everything, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and it wasn't able to finish. Or what king, going to make the war against another king, won't first sit down to consider whether he is able with 10,000 to confront the one coming against him with 20,000? If not, while the other is still far away, he sends an ambassador and asks for peace. So in that same way, whoever does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Therefore, salt is good. But if salt shall lose its flavor, how shall it be made salty again? It is not suitable for the soil or for a manure heap. It is thrown out the one who has ears let them hear.